So for those of you who have been following my channel for a little bit, uh, you know that I recently switched to a different work truck uh, from a van. And uh, one, one of the things I mentioned in that video was my old, uh, well, the, the one that came with the truck was a uh, central, uh, central, yeah, central pneumatic harbor freight gas power compressor. It wasn't building air. It was running rough. The exhaust was falling off. I wasn't happy with it. It was big and oafy, and to be honest with you, I didn't need it. Um, most, most, uh, actually, the only thing I ever use compressed air for nowadays is blowing off forklifts and occasionally running my little hydraulic press to to make air hoses. So that big thing it was just taking up space. It was noisy, and uh, yeah, I didn't want it. So talked to my boss, and we we got rid of that one, and uh, he bought me this guy, which is a piece of paper. It doesn't build much air, but, you know, the, the maintenance is slow. I'm kidding, of course. This is the, and I'll have a better view of it. It's just too big to sit out here on the bench. Uh, it's the Fortress High Performance Series Air Compressor from Harbor Freight. I think the price on it, and if I'm wrong, I'll drop it in the thing. It's about $380 for this. And again, it's nice because I didn't have to buy it. So it was one of the few occasions where I review a tool that did come out of my pocket. But um, yeah, so like I said, this thing, for what it is, it, it'll, it'll do what I need. So let's get into the specifications of the thing. Uh, starting off, it's a 120 volt air compressor, which means you can just plug it into a regular wall outlet. 15 amps is, is fine with it. Uh, five gallon uh, reservoir tank. That's this thing right here. Again, I'll have a better view a little bit later. Uh, five, five gallon reservoir tank. Uh, they are talking about 5.1 SCFMs at 90 PSI. Now, for those of you who don't know, CFM at 90 PSI is kind of a industry standard as far as measuring the output of a air compressor such as this. Um, back when I worked in construction equipment, I used to work on those big tow behind compressors. You'd see the guys running the jackhammers off of, and they range from everywhere from 120 CFM, and the biggest one I've ever worked on was like a 1600 CFM. Um, those tip, those particular compressors, um, the CFMs on those, you could, you know, 185 CFM, it would put out 185 CFM until it ran out of fuel, which happened quite often, uh, by mistake, mind you. Gave me a service call to do. But, um, yeah, with, with these portable compressors, the the whole SCFM rating, which is a standard condition, I, I think that's just a standard condition. It's confusing and complicated, but does it has to do with temperatures and things like that and i think that s thing is a way for them to fudge the numbers well whereas to this it's a 5 cfm it's probably only a 5 cfm for a certain amount of time and under certain conditions whereas if it was a, an actual 5 cfm compressor as opposed to an s cfm compressor it, it would it would be expected to put out that 5 cfm continuously until you shut it off that's just my personal opinion on it but i mean that's generally how things work now, as far as it running, um, 78 dB is what they're claiming. It sounds about right to me. I mean, you could have a conversation while the thing's running at your feet with somebody, and only have to elevate your voice a little bit. It's not, it's not, a, it's not really bad for a rattle trap. Uh, as far as the output goes, you got two quick connect uh, fittings on the uh, front of it. Uh, they're quarter inch MPT, which is yeah, about that big. It's only five CFM, so you really don't need that much. Um, that big of an output on it. As far as the cycling goes on it, um, look, I got I got notes over here. I'm not trying to avoid your eye contact. Uh, it turns on at um, 175 psi, and then it shuts off at 225 psi. And I think it's kind of another way how they kind of get to that 5 cfm because normally, normally with um, Compressors, to get 5 CFM, you're looking at like a 15 to 20 gallon tank to get your uh, 5 CFM. Whereas this, you only have that 5 gallon tank, which is nice because it's it's smaller, but you bump the pressure up, you, you get more CFM out of it. It's kind of like having like an acetylene bottle. You know, I mean, you got, I don't know, a couple thousand PSI of acetylene in it, but you're only using 5 PSI out the torch. I don't know if that's a good example, but it's the best one I got. So, um, yeah, so... That's, that's how they're getting that. Um, it has about a 
seven, six, seven foot extension cord on it. I mean, I could probably pull it out like that, which is about six, seven feet, probably closer to six. Um, as far as as far as putting an an extension cord on it, I would um, recommend at least a twelve gauge extension cord, twenty five feet generally for anything that's that's high amperage. If you go like with like a hundred foot, fourteen gauge extension cord, you plug it in, you're gonna have voltage drop across it, which makes the motor pull more amps, and then and stuff starts breaking. As far as construction goes, um, it's kind of nice the way, I mean, it feels fairly sturdy, built the old in the hand field, uh, in the hand feel, I guess I should say. Uh, it's got two little wheelbarrow wheels on the back end of it. Um, it flip, knocking stuff off the bench there. Um, it flips up and it's got a little extendo handle, kind of like a, like a tool bag would have, and then you can roll it like a like a little piece of luggage around uh weighs about 88 pounds so i mean a guy like me you can kind of you can kind of goon arm it up up onto things and again like i said it feels it feels pretty sturdy as far as that goes um breaking it in um part of the manual that no one ever reads uh they recommend opening up the drain valve for the tank completely closing the um the regulator and letting it basically sit idle running for 15 minutes um i did that already off camera i think you want to have to watch that like watching grass grow but um i will mention also from zero psi in the tank to 100 no, sorry 225 psi which would be the port, part where it shuts off it takes roughly two minutes two minutes 30 seconds that'll change as to the uh, the old piston uh, breaks in a little bit more it'll get better and then eventually it'll start getting worse and then I gotta throw it away but um yeah so this thing um is it? For, stuff just keeps falling this this thing for for what it is it'll work fine for me um cfm wise uh five cfm you're looking at half inch impact i mean it really depends on the tool but like a half inch impact gun 3 8 drill would probably be the top end of it um you could definitely run a couple of framing nailers off this and again it's it's start and stop you know i don't know too many guys that are just banging nails in non-stop with a framing nail you usually you know bang a couple set up another you know what i mean so it worked pretty good with that um uh, as far as grinders go sanders da's and things like that this is definitely will not do what you need it to do those are in the tens of 20s and 30 cfm and this thing wouldn't even keep up for you know little quickie quickie jobs um yeah so i don't know let's go out to my van i'm pretty sure i still have a 3 8 uh, pneumatic drill in there some somewheres and uh what do you say we just get some quarter inch steel i'll put it in the vise and i'll punch some holes through it and uh watch what the gauges do and we'll, we'll see how well it keeps up like i said i could put a cfm gauge on it but i'm not a compression i mean a compressor testing channel and i just didn't feel like making that investment to uh have one <laughs> to make one video so uh yeah head out to the truck we'll do that and then uh see what happens we'll come back here we'll close this bad boy out all right those of you who watched the previous truck tour video um you'll notice that the uh welder that guy um was previously there now it's over there um so now yeah the truck when, when i fuel up with gas no longer no longer lists to uh to the port side it actually drives uh drives flat on the road so that's a bonus and i also installed a 3000 watt power inverter that runs off of the um, the truck power uh 12 volts and um the compressor it's temporarily sitting right here i gotta put it up on this shelf that i think is where it's going to end up being if not down there i don't know that's still up in the air but uh yeah that's the work in progress so uh yeah let me get some things set up and we'll set up some cameras and um we'll give her give her a go i will mention um uh, i don't have a 3 8 um pneumatic drill i have a half inch so We'll go with that. I really don't think there's going to be that much of a difference. And like I said, I'm just trying to give a visual um, representation of as to what kind of capacity, as far as CFM goes, that guy gives. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right, just so we're clear, uh, over here, that would be your um, output pressure uh, coming out of the hose here, which is regulated, uh, oddly enough, by this here regulator. And over here, this is our... 
um, tank pressure. Um, once, like I said before, uh, 225, the uh, pump or the motor will shut off, stop producing air. 175 is when it actually starts producing air again, trying to keep up with you. Uh, when this gauge starts reading what this gauge is reading, that's when we're losing CFM and and uh, we're not happy anymore. So um, yeah, let me uh, get some stuff started up and hooked up and uh, uh, we'll start drilling. We got this piece of, I don't know, three quarter inch, one inch aluminum block and we're gonna punch a hole through it and uh, see how long the compressor can keep up. it for that yeah back up to full pressure now um, let's give this little quarter inch die grinder with this flapper wheel try on here see how long you can keep up with that Just for shits and giggles, I don't think this will be able to do anything, but uh, let's see what it does with the old Ugga Dugga machine. that's about it for that that is or that was because we already recorded that part um, the fortress high performance series air compressor from Harbor Freight uh, like I said in the beginning of the video I mean it, it does what it's supposed to do it pumps air up and it runs tools um, like I said, I could have put a CFM gauge on it to see if they were lying about the thing, but that still doesn't tell you what the what the compressor will actually run as far as visual goes. And I'm a visual kind of guy. I mean, you can tell me what it'll do and what it should be able to run, but I'd kind of like to see it myself. With the big half-inch drill, we didn't punch through that chunk of aluminum. I mean, that was a big, that was like a 5 8 bit, I think. 5 8 No, it wasn't a 5 8 It might have been a half-inch bit. But, I mean, it was a big bit, so I wasn't expecting it to get all the way through. That thing's been slow anyway. But it was more about seeing how long it would actually run. And if it was a smaller bit, I definitely would have punched at least one hole through that thing. Um, I think the biggest surprise of the day was the old uh, IR. I think it was a 30-year-old IR impact that actually busted that, that truck lug loose. I mean, just about drained the tank doing it, but it did it. So, I don't know. I'll keep the old girl around a little longer as a backup because it uh, seems like a does all right but um yeah so that's a compressor it seems all right if it blows up i'll more than happy come back and we'll, we'll pull it apart and see what actually went wrong in it but um i think it'll be all right for for what i'm using it for diy guys i could also i can't see why this would be a problem maybe get the 
get the warranty on the thing or the extended warranty on the thing if you're worried about it. Uh, professional 9 to 5, eh, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you're running one of these all week long and how it's holding up or if not at all. I'm, I'm kind of curious myself. But um, yeah, so I'll, I'll link this into the comments. It's not an affiliate link. Uh, Harbor Freight doesn't want to have anything to do with me, especially from my, my, some of my past videos where I'm trashing their stuff and their advertisements. But um, yeah, so I'll put it in there just so you know that you're looking at the same thing I'm looking at. I think this kind of more, more or less goes for North America. I don't think they have any equivalent of Harbor Freight across the pond there or anywhere else in the world. But um. Yeah, so at least you guys, you know, you can kind of get a look at it. But uh, I think that's about it. So uh, thanks for watching. Comments, concerns, leave them in the comments section. Do my best to answer them as always. And uh, yeah, that's a video. There you go.